Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a huge program, and we have everybody on the scene today. Me, Betsy, Aaron, Alex, everybody. So we have uh, lots to share, and I'm going to get going. But I thought I would start with a couple things. First of all, this is Carnelian Month. This is March, and we are promoting the Carnelian Coat pattern and kits. It's a wonderful, wonderful project for So Confident. <clears throat> it's not hard, but there are lots of elements to consider when making this. We have big mitered corners at this wonderful collar. We have loops and buttonholes. We have a very unusual method of making a welt pocket that really is kind of a flap instead of a welt. We have a back vent, kind of a men's tailoring uh, element to it, and a fabulous set of fabrics. So behind me is one of the fabrics. This is one of the kits in the black and white. Uh, it's a cotton. These fabrics were made for us in France. They were woven for us. Very excited about them. The girls found them when they were at a market at an international market in New York in January and decided that we would have them weave it for us. There are two sides to the fabric. You can either use the white background or the black background. And it's your choice. Betsy, of course, of course, made the fuchsia version and used the lighter side. The pattern is slightly different. There's a teal version of this, a fuchsia version, and the black and white has a slightly different uh, motif to it, but it's, a, it's the same weight of fabric, same kind of fabric, but you can use either side. Now, <clears throat> she decided not to do the welt pocket and has made a, an inseam pocket using probably a Liberty of London. <laughs> yeah, so you're gonna learn about this. And then Thursday at 12.30 Central Time is our first Q&A. And that Q&A is going to be all about how to do a plaid matching a patch pocket on the garment. So we have lots to talk about on Thursday as well. Now, <clears throat> since this was made for us in uh, France, <clears throat> the fabric has been on a kind of a slow journey. We have sent out all of the black and white kits. We've sent out all of the fuchsia kits. You should be beginning to see them this week. I know on Facebook, some of you posted that you uh, got them yesterday. The teal was separated from the shipment and we know for a fact that it is in Kansas City. We ought to have it today or tomorrow and we will get them right out to you. So those of you who ordered teal, it's coming, it's here, we're safe, all is good. So sign up for So Confident for the month, sign up for the year. Uh, Q&A is Thursday at 12.30 Central Time, so I hope to see you there. I have lots of things to talk about that people have emailed me questions, so we'll get right into that. But I thought I would start today with um, a little bit of how we do all this. I said to my husband this morning, you know, we've been doing these live streams for four years. And I get these emails from people saying, how do you do that every week? You know, it's surprisingly easy, actually. <laughs> but there is kind of a stream of consciousness that goes through the office, maybe on a Friday or Thursday or a Monday, whatever. And so, and Betsy, who is the controller of content that we do in this place, had us signed up for something else today. When, of course, Aaron and I got together and said, fooey on that, we want to do something else. <laughs> So we changed Bessie's mind, or we told her to change her mind is what we did. And, um, but this is how it started. So I think it was on Friday. Um, we knew that Bessie was working on a vest. She's been working on it for a while. We keep moving that topic to another date. And finally we said, you know what? This is the time of year. I think I had on a vest is how it started. I'm not really sure, but I love vests. I love that third layer for a number of reasons, for warmth, just that extra little layer that just make, feels cozy, or for show without adding a lot of bulk. For instance, what I have on, for example. 
So we're sitting there and we realize that we've just gotten in these fabulous new quilted fabrics that are lightweight and perfect for this time of year. So I said, well, you know, I remember that I wrote an article for Threads Magazine, believe it or not, 10 years ago, June, July, 2014, and I had featured a vest. Now this is the peony vest. I'd made it out of Tyvek, and I know you all know what that is. That's house insulation stuff. Um, and I took Tyvek and I layered it over some uh, jersey knit and top stitched it and then added an exposed zipper. So you can go to Threads Magazine. If you're an insider, of course, you can just type in Tyvek and the vest will come up. Or you can type in Linda Lee and all my articles from Threads from back when come up. But you might want to read about it. But here's the actual vest. And this is really fun. So we started with this vest. Oh, let's do a vest. And we've got quilted fabric, so let's do that. Oh, well, Betsy's working on a vest. Hmm. All right, let's get her to finish it. You know, we need, she needed the motivation to finish it. So we texted her and said, finish that vest. Let's put that vest on, which you'll see in a little bit. She's going to talk about it. She used a surprising pattern. You're not going to believe it. She did not use the peony vest like this. She used the Florence shirt, which blew my mind. So you're going to see that. And then I said, you know, one of my favorite vests of all time is from a designer by the name of Jean Cassisado. Jean Cassisado was a teacher at the sewing workshop back in the day in San Francisco. She was one of my favorite teachers. And I said, she taught me how to do double binding or not double binding. Um, what do we call it? Like offset? offset binding. Thank you. <laughs> and it's a binding that is narrow on one side and wider on the other side. You can use it either way. We tend to use it with the narrow side on the outside and the wider side on the back side. Okay, so all of a sudden we're into Jean Cassisado and binding and what did she use? And she uses wool jersey or knit or whatever. So I dug out a vintage Jean Cassisado vest. You can see her initials right here, Jean Williams Cassisado. And of course she was well known for her washing of wool and felting and sculpting wool and wool jersey fantastic artist to the extent that she's one of the important artists of our time who was featured in this very famous book called Art to Wear by Julie Dale, who owned a, a, the Art to Wear store in New York for years. And Jean has a whole feature in this book about her work. She started out as a fine artist, a painter, and then she moved into macrame and macrame led to um, knitting and crochet and collage. And then all of a sudden she discovered wool and wool jersey and became a sewer. So she has a great story. You might want to check it out, read about her. But so we incorporated this method of binding into the chateau coat pattern, which you're going to see also. So you can see how this just one thing leads to another. We go to the vault, we pick out things that are interesting that people maybe have never seen, but it's it's our it's our encyclopedia of what we do. So then I'm I'm this morning I'm lying in bed. I'm knowing that I'm going to wear this because it's a peony vest, and this is from a another piece of clothing that I bought almost 40 years ago that I recycled and made into the peony vest. So then that took me to this vest, which is the peony vest. My mother-in-law was a clothes horse. She had fabulous clothes. And she also had a best friend who owned a really high-end boutique, Turtle Creek in Dallas. If you know Turtle Creek, you know everything on Turtle Creek is high-end. So my mother-in-law had this, and this was the 80s, and she had these huge, big, wonderful jackets. So after she died, I took one of her jackets and restyled it into a vest. So this is, every time I look at this, I think of Grandma Ernie and her beautiful clothes. All I'm saying is vests are something that can be important, vintage, warm, 
but do something interesting with them and don't just buy, you know, Patagonia or whatever. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to talk about vests and we're going to talk about fabrics and all kinds of doodads that go with all of that in vest making. So I think I, I'm about ready to turn it over to Aaron, I think. Have I, have I said all I was supposed to say? Sounds good. All right. Okay, transition. Um, so I just wanted to come on and um, kind of dive in a little bit to um, the vest that Linda was just talking about. And, um, and some of the techniques that we have used on these vests, they go from our, some of our vest patterns to we have some jacket patterns where we use the same techniques, just like she was talking about with the binding on the chateau. And so it's really nice to just pick different techniques from different patterns and incorporate them into your own creations. And it's a great way to use patterns that you already have. And you love the technique from the chateau. You love the technique from the Brando and you incorporate it into, into one pattern. So it's a great way to realize how much, um, how many techniques and how much knowledge you have um, just based on some patterns that you might already have in your stash. So, or if you don't, you can um, get them. So back to the, the peony vest um, that Linda was talking about. Um, the peony vest um, has this exposed zipper on it. And um, one of the projects that we uh, use, or you can use to create this exposed zipper is the Brando. So a similar technique was used in our Brando jacket pattern. So the Brando jacket is completely different than the Peony. Um, it is a lined jacket, um, collar. It has a lot more you know, detail to it, but it has this exposed zipper. I remember when exposed zippers were really popular. You saw them popping up everywhere on the front of jackets and the back of dresses. Um, and so I think it's a really fun technique to show off those zippers. Instead of hiding the zipper tape, why not expose the zipper? If you have a fun stripe, we have lace zippers, you know, different colors. So it's a really fun way to be able to show off those zippers. So the technique we used was similar from the Brando. So I'm going to talk about a few details um, from a slideshow that we have from the Brando about how you do that exposed zipper. So in, um, in our Series 8, I believe it was Series 8 So Confident, um, we featured the Brando jacket. And one of the things we taught you how to do was work with this exposed zipper. And so um, you need a few tools in order to make um, this really easy. Um, a lot of times you might have a zipper that you buy, say you need a 20 inch zipper, but you fall in love with a 24 inch zipper. Well, no problem. You can shorten that zipper with a few tools. And um, one of the things you need is you see this um, set of pliers on the screen and then you need a zipper stop. And then that allows you to keep the function of the bottom of the zipper and then shorten it from the top. And so um, you'd use those two tools and then you can shorten the zipper. So on the next slide, um, you'll see how you shorten the zipper. And so um, from the top, you are gonna measure the length that you need. Your pattern may say how long you need, or it's um, maybe it's a new design. So you basically just need to figure out the length of the zipper that you need and measure. And then, so whatever excess you have at the top, um, you are going to, um, you're gonna, well, you're going to measure it and then you're going to put your stop in at the very top of the zipper and um, and then you're going to remove what's above that stop. And so you're going to remove the, the zipper teeth only and um, and then cut off at least three quarters of an inch above that mark. And then on the next slide. Um, the next few slides talk about how you install it on the Brando, but then you can also apply this to, um, to the Peony vest. One of the other tools that we love to use to install zippers on most projects is, is instead of using um, your pins, it's really nice to use some sort of tape or, or fusy web. But in this instance, we've realized that instead of using fusy web, which uses your iron, which creates the heat, we think a better tool or a better um, notion is your tape. And so, so you don't get like a buckling or a wave in your zipper. You're gonna use a tape instead. We have a craft tape 
or something we call a no sew basting tape. So that's something that you can stick on your fabric and then stick your zipper on top of that surface to keep it in place. So when you're using um, the craft tape, you're gonna, um, on your pattern, you're going to um, draw a chalk line at the placement at the placement for the zipper, and you're gonna stick your craft tape there. And that is where your zipper is going to go. And so once you have that line, you are gonna place the wrong side of your zipper along that sticky part of the craft tape. And once you've done that, you can stitch your zipper in place. So a great way to stitch a zipper in place is to use a zipper foot. And so you are gonna stitch along your, you know, your placement line. And um, you, you're gonna, depending on the zipper, you're gonna, you're gonna stitch it probably three eighths of an inch away. And um, you're gonna wanna move your needle to the left or right, depending on your zipper. And you're gonna wanna stitch next to your zipper teeth. And one thing to keep in mind is your zipper pull. So um, instead of trying to stitch around your zipper pull, you want to keep your needle position down, lift up on your presser foot and move the zipper um, pull out of the way. And you can adjust that as you stitch down the length of the zipper. And so um, another tip that you might have is if you don't want to use, say you don't have any craft tape or no sew basting tape, you might want to use a fusible interfacing um, just to stabilize it in place. And then once you've done one side of the zipper, you're gonna to go to the other side. In the instance of the Brando, you're gonna to go to your right front. And on this one, you um, are going to make a chalk mark. You're gonna make a chalk mark that is five eighths away from your cut edge. And then you're going to make another chalk mark three eighths of an inch away from there. And that's your zipper placement line. And as you can see here, you're going to do the same thing. Use your craft tape to put your zipper in place. And then you're going to stitch on that five eighths inch line. So those are just a few tips that you can use in order to install um, your zipper in place. And I'm just going to show you uh, a few things here. So here are the pliers that we are showing and then also the zipper stops. And then one thing we are gonna promote this week is we are promoting that you, if you order a zipper, you get two zipper stops for free. So those are just a few um, tips that we have for the Peony vest and the Brando. And now Bessie is gonna talk about the Florence. She is. Bring her in. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you on this lovely Tuesday morning. Um, so yeah, this vest has been a long time in the making, perhaps a little too long in the making, but things get pushed back. And, um, you know, sometimes we, we just can't get to that last little bit, which in this case was the binding. Sometimes it's a hem, but we got her done. So it came about because, um, and you probably know now that I manage the photo shoots. And so I am the first person who gets to play with the fabric that comes in. And so I've always got things in my mind as we're shooting the fabric. And last fall, we got in this quilted puffy fabric, which I don't think we've ever really had before. And so I started thinking about what we could do with it. And it was about the time that we were working with the Florence shirt for some projects for So Confident. And one thing led to another, um, as Linda mentioned earlier, and I thought, what if we made it into a vest? So let me show you what the Florence shirt is so you can see, I guess, kind of how strange a one to the other is. So the Florence shirt, okay. Um, the Florence shirt is a button-down shirt. It's got a collar and stand. It is an A-line shape. It's got tucks in the front, and it's got a little pocket. Um, it looks nothing like this little boxy vest that I made. But for some reason, um, I think because the Florence shirt fits me really well, 
that's kind of my go-to pattern. So if I want to try something, um, try variations, I go off a pattern that I know I like initially. Um, so what I did was create this guy. This is a boxy quilted vest. It's got a stand-up collar and an exposed zipper in the front, and it is bound using our offset knit binding technique. So um, Alex, I think we've got some slides that we're gonna show on how to do it. So like the, the biggest change of course is the pattern work because as you can see on the slide, the shirt pattern is very um, A-line, it's not very straight. So what I did is I cut it at the length and shorten line. Now that was a really good um, length for me. It's a, it's a little bit short. It's, it's really kind of waist length. That might not be the best for you. I would measure the center back and see where you want your vest to end. Um, but if it does work for you, it's great because it's right there on the pattern. And then you can also see that to box it out, I started at the arm's eye and just made a straight line down to my bottom hem. It was super easy to do. Um, and then you just cut it and then you've got two little boxier um, pattern pieces. So after that, um, I also, well, I guess you have the slide up. Um, the back does have a lower back and a back yoke. And so I merged those into one piece, um, which was pretty easy. You just mark your seam lines for both of them, overlap them the five eighths and tape them. And so then that was my back piece ready to go. I also um, merged the front band to the front pieces. Um, again, you mark your 5-8 seam line, um, overlap your front band, and just really tape it together and cut it to the length of your um, uh, front piece. And then the last thing I did was with the collar. There we go. I used the bottom of the collar piece because I used the collar stand um, because I didn't want to change the way the collar stand worked with the neckline. So by tracing the bottom of the collar stand, you're not changing the construction of the original pattern, but then I made it into a three inch rectangle, if you will, with kind of a curved bottom. And so that was an easy way to go with that. Um, when working with the fabric, one thing I did, which I don't normally do, is I pre-finish the edges with a serger. Um, it's not a ravelly fabric, but it does have that center puff to it. And so I just wanted to make sure that I was working with clean lines and things weren't getting kind of snaggy. Um, it's super easy to work with, actually. So... You know, once you've got your pieces cut out, you really just have three, four pieces to put together and that's easy enough. And then I used um, our exposed zipper instructions from, it was kind of a mix of the West End and the Brando jacket. And then I just found the offset binding instructions from the Ch Chateau, Chateau? Chateau, <laughs> sorry, I just forgot what I was saying. And um, used that for the bottom and the arms eye binding. Now, um, we went through that really quick, but we do have a tutorial that outlines all of the pattern work, the exposed zipper information, and the offset binding information. So you can get um, all of the instructions for making the, the little vest. Um, do we have any questions? There's a question on what jacket you're wearing. Oh, the jacket that I'm wearing is um, Kathy's Now Jacket Variation. I stole it from downstairs. Which it has the binding. It does have the off. It, well, it's not the offset binding, but it does have a knit binding on the edges. We love a knit binding. And um, you can't really so, see it. Mm, go ahead. So I have a question. Yes. So how did you finish the front of the jacket under the zipper? It's just surged. Okay. So on the so you if you looked, you could see the surged edge. Yes, you can see the surged edge. Um, so when you surged it, did you did you surge off a seam allowance or did you leave it? Um, I just did it right on the edge. 
Okay. So I left the seam allowance. I just wanted to finish it so that it had a clean line on the inside. And then, so then I don't think when we talked about the exposed zipper that we talk about turning down the top tape right. to finish it. Right, so that's something different um, that I did that you'll find in the tutorial. So I took the, um, the zipper was too long for this. So I took it all the way to the top before I put the inside collar on stitched it down and then when i did the inside collar i zip i stitched it right over um the zipper to act as a stop but also because if you're chilly you might want to zip it all the way up all the way to the top there so so on the binding Mm -hmm. Show us the narrow part and then turn it so we can see the wider part. Sure. On the bottom. So with offset binding, that really means that um, on your front side, you're going to have a narrow strip of binding. And on the inside, you're going to have a wider binding. You could do a classic binding where it's the same on both sides. I like the look of this a um, little bit better. So you can see down here. So sh yeah, that second row of stitching. Yeah. Is what it, you're seeing as the wider part yeah. of the inside. So there is a line of binding down here, and you can see this row of stitching up here. And that's because on the inside, let me move her closer, you have a wider strip of binding, and then you stitch right along the top edge. So let me see if I can do a, a both, so you can see both a little bit. Yeah. It's actually a really kind of nice and easy way to do a binding. I find that doing the, um, the method where it's the same size, it can get a little fiddly just to make sure everybody's on the same, on the same width. Um, this gives you, I think, a little bit more maneuverability. Um, and also, I think it looks nice. It has a nice clean line on the inside. So when you, put, when you alter the collar on that, <laughs> you've eliminated the stand. Well, this is the stand. Oh, sorry, I missed yeah. that. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay, I should I should read. Uh, <laughs> listen. Okay, so obviously that fits the neck. Opening. Yes, yes. So that's why I use the collar and stand. So everything I've done is to, although I've made the pattern changes, I haven't changed the way the pattern goes together. So using the collar and stand means that you can put this in without any changing of the neckline or those pattern pieces. Basically, all you're doing is um, you're adding the front band to give it a little bit more so that you can close your vest and you're doing the yoke and the back together, but you're not changing the way it goes together. Um, because I think if it fits, why change it? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so using the stand means that you don't have to worry about any of that. And Betsy, because it's a knit, you didn't have to turn under on the inside edge. You just use the raw edge, correct? No. So actually what you do is you do, um, I'll go behind. You will do the raw edges matching on the front. When you stitch the front, you stitch it together. And then when you turn it, you have a turned edge on the back. So it's a really clean look. You could do it. If you want to show the chateau? Sure. Um, that one has the raw edge um, on the inside of the garment, on the wider part of the binding. Since you wouldn't have to to finish the edges because it's a knit. Yeah. We have a tutorial called Three Bias Bindings that I'm going to post in the chat. And it's a great tutorial that includes techniques for how to do a lot of different kinds of bindings, including offset binding. Right, but it doesn't have, oh, <laughs> there's some discussion back there. So yeah, it does have the offset binding. Um, this method that I used, I got out of the Chateau pattern. So um, if you have that, you can also look at that. And it is in the um, tutorial as well. Uh, how did you finish the side seams of your vest? How did I finish them? They are surged. I'll take it off so you can see it. 
Just a really clean surge. And did you change the arm's eye? I did not change the arm's eye. Now, speaking of the arm's eye, um, Aaron and I were talking about it earlier. It is the Florence arm's eye, so it is a shirt arm's eye. Um, so you can see it's pretty close. Um, if you wanted a vestier arm side, if you think you're gonna wear like a sweater knit or something under that, you might wanna change that a little bit. Erin was talking that she has some, some puffer vests that have like a, a much larger arm side um, versus the, the tighter one. But. Yeah, you could use the peony. If you had the peony pattern, you could use that shape. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Betsy, do you know how much fabric you used for this? Let's see. So we think you need probably a yard and a half for the body and then a yard for the knit binding. Hmm? Is that what we have written down? Yeah. Okay, I think that's all of my questions for Betsy. Would you guys like to show us the fabrics? Sure, let's do it. Ma'am? Hello, hello. Let's get this out of the way. So we've gotten in some really great quilted puffy fabrics lately from a variety of sources. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have two that are the same and then two that are unique down here. <laughs> so we just got these in, these beautiful Japanese fabrics and the great thing is we have like a lilac mm -hmm. on one side and then a really kind of creamy taupe. Yeah, it's like a, a greeny gray, um, almost like a silvery color, mm -hmm. I guess in a way. Um, but it's double sided. Mm -hmm. So if you're wearing your, your vest, actually, particularly with the peony vest, I think it'd be really nice because it would fall open and you could see both sides. Right, I think that'd be really nice. If you did a flat bell seam on the side seams and shoulder seams, you could make it reversible. Oh, so that's, that's true. That's a good idea. I don't know if you guys heard that, but you could use a flat filled seam and then it would make it reversible. Um, so you could see uh, both sides of the mm -hmm. vest. Yeah. So I think that would be really nice. What's this next so one? So there's lilac and gray, and then there's navy and burgundy, which is a really lovely combination. Um, mm, very collegiate. <laughs> very I was collegiate. talking about this last night, and my husband was like, oh, you need to make something for, you know, March Madness. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And then down here we have, um, this is a little bit different. It's actually got a uh, vertical um, stitch to it. Again, quilted. It is water resistant. And this is actually a really lovely light fabric. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a little bit thinner than that, but it's really, um, it's very soft and light to wear. Which I think is great for this time of year. It's a transitional time between winter and spring. So just having an extra layer that's not too heavy. It's not your fleece vests, you know, that are going to be too heavy for this time of year. It's the perfect weight. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have the black, which is what I used for my vest. And this has a diamond stitching pattern that's a little bit smaller than than the uh, lilac and the burgundy. I will say I had my vest on um, whilst I was working on putting the tutorial and stuff together for you. And it is quite warm. Like it really does a nice job of keeping you warm just where you need it, mm -hmm. um, but it's not hot, so it's really nice. Right, and you can change what you put underneath it. You could put a sweater, you know, or something a little heavier underneath if you needed to, mm -hmm. or you can do a t-shirt, like mm -hmm. we've shown it with the trio. So I think you can you can change up depending on the armhole, of course, like we talked about, you could change up what you <laughs> yeah. put underneath it. But these are actually thin enough, too, that if you were layering with the idea of like throwing on a like a lighter jacket with your vest, like it's not going to feel too bulky um, with a layer on top of it that you can then take off, depending if you're mm -hmm. spending all day outside. So let's talk about what you can um, put with these puffy fabrics. And we have a couple different options. So we've talked about knit binding. So we have a few knit binding options um, that you can add to it. So over here we have, of course, you can do something that coordinates or something that's the same shade or that's a complete contrast. Um, so picked out this beautiful plum knit 
And it looks really great with the lilac. Looks nice with the red. It does. <laughs> and then we have navy, which I think looks really good. So it, of course, coordinates with the, the navy and the kind of cranberry red. But then you could also put it with the blue, this cornflower blue. Yeah. And of course, um, anything that's a black and white stripe, I will wear. Um, and so, of course, the black and white stripe is a really fun detail that you can um, add to pretty much any of the colors, but I loved it with the blue. And then, of course, you can add it to the black. And then we've got a Citron uh, jersey, which is what I used for my vest, which it looks really great with the black. It also looks really nice with the lavender. Um, so it's kind of a little bright pop mm -hmm. on the edge. And another really interesting thing that we got in was um, a matching um, binding for the cornflower blue, which I thought was really interesting. And it also came with a coordinating zipper. So what's interesting about the, um, I'm going to bring it up, the bias tape here. It's a double fold bias tape, and it's actually made out of the same thin material as this um, blue. And so it is water resistant bias tape. It has all the same properties that the fabric does, mm -hmm. but as the bias tape. So how would we put this on? Well, so it's a double fold. I mean, I guess you could here, yeah. hold that. <laughs> um, so you've got two folded edges. So you can just sandwich the edges. How? How would you do it? would you do it? Okay, let's let's hear how Linda will do it. <laughs> okay, I, I can't resist, you know. <clears throat> so the way I do it is to. Would you do it? it? Okay, let's let's hear how Linda will do it. <laughs> All right, I can't resist. I have to butt in. Um, <clears throat> so so I, I would first. Would you do it? Okay, let's let's hear how Linda will do it. <laughs> All right, I can't resist. I have to bite. Um, <laughs> so, so I would first. Would you do it? Okay, let's let's hear how Linda will do it. All right, Alex, I can't resist. You hear that? I have to bite. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I would first. Right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to mute them okay, while <laughs> they figure out what's happening with the echo. Alex here. Um, it's right. going on Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to mute them. Yeah, is it open anywhere? on my phone but it's all it's all moving. All right, I think you're good. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um I'm going to grab uh we have other tapes. The elastic tapes? Yes. It's the same concept. Uh we have this in a lot of colors. We do. I believe we have at least 8 to 10 colors of the right. of this. This is a an elastic double fold tape. And so when I'm applying this to an edge, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to hand baste or machine baste the, the bottom layer down first. And then I'm going to wrap it and stitch it. If you don't get one half of it stabilized and perfect, then folding it, you're never going to meet the edge when you try to stitch it. So that's how I would do it. <laughs> Sorry about that, girls. <laughs> okay. So I have tried to do it all at once before, and it's not a fun. Maybe you were going to say that but, anyway. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't. Um, I remember on an Alabama chain and skirt. Exactly. I thought I could do it all at once because, of course, it was at the end of a project. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. Let me just do it all at once. But it doesn't, right. it doesn't quite work. Yeah, well, this yeah. does make great bindings for in, in lieu of a waistband, mm -hmm. by the way. Right. Like on the 8th Avenue skirt or, oh, gosh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but this is fantastic binding. And as you say, eight colors. So right. yeah, yeah. It comes, it's also a Japanese product that is a little hard to find. And it's amazing. Um, I feel like this happens in our office all the time, but 
everything coordinated perfectly. I we know. We had it out on the table and we were like, oh, all of a sudden, look, I at, know. look at the lilac. It's fantastic. Look at the green, look at the red, look at the taupe looks really good yeah. on the other side of the, the lilac. So yeah. we have some really good colors. And if you're curious about maybe something that needs to be contrasting, just let us know and we can find the perfect fit for you. But it was pretty amazing how well these worked with the colors. And um, we were, um, I did figure out that you need about three yards of, um, of this in order to do the vest. That does depend on how much of the um, you're going to bind. So if you're gonna do, I was figuring um, the bottom of the vests and then the arms eye, if you're gonna do a front or if you're gonna do a neck, um, then you need to, to get a little bit more. But it did take three yards for the XXL, so. All right, do we have any other questions? Um, can you use double-sided sticky tape to stabilize the tape? Oh, to stabilize the, um, the elastic? I think so. I've never done it, but yeah, maybe. I think so, because um, don't, you don't necessarily want to use this for its elastic capabilities, you know? So um, I think it's nice and it makes it a little bit easier to put on, of course, but you're not going to want to, you know, keep that elastic. You're not trying to stretch it over your fabric. So I think you could. Can Betsy put the vest she made on? Sure, of course. <laughs> I thought I have a sleeveless shirt on, so there we go. And Betsy, we do have some questions about your pants. Ooh, oh. just made them yesterday. Okay, so this is gonna look a little funny because I have a very short sleeve shirt on, but. That's your summer vest option. <laughs> That's my summer vest. Ooh, I look like a muscle person. <laughs> Like but yeah, so it hits about hip bone length on me. Um, yeah. Cute. yeah, pretty cute. Um, pants? My pants are the West End pants. Um, you can't really see them. They've got a wild cat on them. I believe it's a cheetah. And it's a beautiful grass green, actually like sateen viscose. Um, which is a little unusual. It's not. It's got a really nice weight to it. It's a little heavier than like your classic viscose crayon. So, can we see the back, the reverse side of the red, and maybe just all of the fabrics? Can you show the reverse side of the fabrics again? So here's the the lilac with the taupe, and then this cranberry and the navy. And then the other ones are the same on each side. So the cornflower blue and then the black. And back to the carnelian. Can we see the carnelian coat collar? Yes. So you can fold it down or you could pop the collar, but it's got this great miter right there. Do you see that? It's kind of tricky to see on this print, but a very deep miter. The, um, on the Carnelian video, uh, while I was watching it, um, it has got so many great techniques, just sitting there and, and, and learning about how you install the, the shoulder, how you do the miter, how you do the pocket. I was so impressed with just how packed it was with information that you could use for a variety of different patterns. I was, I was very impressed. Erin, <laughs> uh, can you just review the yardage needed for these different things? So for the fabric, for the bindings, for the fabric, if you're making the bindings out of the fabric. I can, as I put on this other peony vest a lengthened peony vest with the same zipper technique as a tie back. Um, so, okay, so you can, um, for the fabric for the peony vest, um, you can either make the original version um, or um, this longer version. So you would need two to two and a half yards for that. 
Um, cause you're not using on the peony, you're not using all your pattern pieces because the original peony does have facings and lining pieces. And so, um, you don't need to use those in these, um, in these garments. And then, um, for the quilted Florence, you just need one and a half yards. And then, um, for your binding, you need up, we said a yard, we need up to a yard. Um, you're going to have some excess, but who doesn't need you know, some black and white stripe in their stash. So that's a good um, fabric to have on hand. And then the fold over elastic or the binding, um, this tape here, three yards. All right, and what's on sale? Okay, so what's on sale? So we have um, the peony vest is a PDF pattern is on sale. The Florence shirt is both PDF and printed. And then um, the Brando, the exposed zipper technique that I talked about is in the Series 8 Brando tutorial, and that is on sale. And then we do have a new tutorial um, that Betsy put together um, that talks about her Florence vest, and that's just $5 today, right? Mm -hmm. So just $5. Um, so that's a really, really good, it's a, just, it has a lot of information in it um, to put together that Florence vest. And then all of our quilted fabrics are on sale along with a few of these knit options for the binding. And then the fold over elastic is also on sale. And then um, we also have zippers on sale. So we have some really great separating zippers. Um, we have stripes, we have solid, we have different lengths. This is a black and white striped zipper, which we also have in a beautiful like taupe and white with gold. I think this one's really fun. And then, you know, of course we have black and gray and uh, white with different zipper pull options, different colors of teeth. So a lot of different options. Um, we have anywhere from nine inch to 24 inch, I believe is the longest we have. Um, those are all on sale. We did talk about the coordinating cornflower blue zipper. I believe we only have five of these. So that is limited on how many of these we do have. And then um, the no sew basting tape that we talked about for the zipper installation is also on sale and the sewing and craft tape. So there's two different options on the tape that you can use. The no sew basting tape is a, is a little um, narrower than the sewing and craft tape, but either one of those works. Let's see, anything else? Oh, and then our, um, so if you do buy a zipper, and you need to shorten it, the technique that we talked about with, for the zipper stops, we are going to give away two free zipper stops when you buy a zipper. So that'll be included. We have them in a variety of colors, you know, from, from gold to, to black to silver. So we have um, a couple different options and we'll coordinate that with the zipper that you buy. All right. Anything else? I believe that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Any other questions? Um, a question just came in. Do we sell elastic colored binding? Is that what this is called? Um, th that's what we're using it for. Yes. <laughs> we have, um, I don't know the exact color, but I think it's, there's, I think there's eight to 10 colors. So, and maybe Alex, you have the exact number, but we have a variety of colors from, from red to, to taupe, to, to white to you know lime green purple we have a lot of different colors so i just have a few oh, 11 11 11 colors it's like 11 so, yeah and they're they're beautiful they're very soft drapey they're they're really great to work with i went through a phase where i used these for the sole purpose of making hair ties so they also make really nice hair ties. There you go. You have a little excess. You trim off a little bit at the end. <laughs> uh, last question. Which color zipper would you recommend for the lavender vest? Let's see. I think we do have, I think we put it with the gray 
I mean, you can do a classic black. Um, we have gray. You could even do white. I think it, you know, depends on which side you're going to use. If you are going to use the taupe side, I wonder how this looks. So I think there's there's quite a few options. We can help you with that. All right, that's all the questions. Good job, okay. girls. <laughs> We're getting cheers from Linda. That's great. <laughs> okay, well, if there are any other questions, it was great um, to be on today, and uh, we'll see you next week.